Good morning, world. You're in the office with Joseph Skoda. Today, I'm actually in my office. It doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes my office is on the beach or in a park or in the living room, quite frankly. But it's very important to go out there and get messages out. It's really important to me to interview aspiring artists and people who, who are movers and shakers in the world. And, and more importantly than that, people have a real message, uh, have a story that they want to share with the rest of us. So please help me welcome. And, and right now, you're in the office with Joseph Snowden. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and look me up on all of our social media. But right now, we're in the office, not just with Joseph Skoda, but we're in the office with our special guest, Cameron Fetter. How you doing, Cameron? Hi, I'm doing great. Uh, thank you so much for having me on. I'm very, very excited to be present here on uh, on In the Office with Joseph Skoda. Um, thank you for having me. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it. If I'm not mistaken, you're from New York. Is that right? Yes. Well, I'm originally from Massachusetts, but I, I do reside in, in New York at the moment, New York City. Queens, in fact. Okay. It's been to Queens many times. It's I would like to say it's really cold in New York, but actually so is Massachusetts. Not a big difference in weather this time of year. It's it's it can be miserable. Yeah, maybe a bit maybe a bit colder in Massachusetts, maybe about a ten degree difference, but not 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 much. Not much more. Uh, well no. what made you move to New York? Um, it was for me the pursuit of art, um, especially comedy, but I do consider myself to be an upcoming uh screenwriter filmmaker you know all these things so i you know thought it best to be able to participate in a larger community than say boston or a town like worcester for example sure, I, I used to live in bangor bangor mm. maine yeah, stephen I've king stephen exactly. king's I've been to famed his residence a couple times i have a picture of stephen king pointing a rifle at my brother on the on the he's up on the top, he had a two story house. So he's upstairs, and my brother jumps over the fence. He take a picture. So he's a he's up in the living room, right by the the window, and I could see above Stephen King with a shotgun. <laughs> oh my goodness, my brother! Picture didn't come out very good, and I've run into Stephen King many times at the local subway. And he would walk there. He he'd be in coveralls, always in coveralls. <laughs> Just a funny guy. Just a funny guy. You mm. mentioned you were in a comedy. And yes. when I first retired from the Air Force, I tried, I, I was, I thought it was funny. Then I tried stand up comedy and I just froze. What's your secret from not freezing up on stage? Ah, uh, stage fright. Well, I have to confess, I do deal with that from time to time as well uh, when it comes to live performance. Um, I feel that the best way to deal with, with these kinds of anxieties is to just, I mean, honestly, just do it, just go through it. And, 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 you know, maybe you can try one of the tried and true old methods, pretend you're visualizing the audience in the nude or something along those lines. But, uh, when it comes to stage fright, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, maybe this is poor advice, but alcohol can also be a boon from time to time of course uh course. but these things you know we we grow and we we learn to deal with them in the course of our careers i, I totally can agree with that um over the years i've taken toastmasters and that's an organization where we teach leadership and communication skills by the art of public speaking and now i speak in front of hundreds and hundreds of people but back in the day, no way. <laughs> mm. It was a very miserable time for me. So what made you decide on, on comedy or, or is that where you want to be your whole life? Well, I can I've always kind of uh seen myself as a as a bit of a comedian, a bit of the the class clown, I guess you could say. Nowadays for me, it's less uh stand up comedy is 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 less my field i actually um am a co-host of a comedy podcast uh so not so dissimilar to what you do here i guess um sure. but my podcast is called podcast about list and this was definitely something that i was intending to get into from a young age i just loved the idea of a 
comedy podcast. Uh, it just feels very important to me, very close to my heart. And that definitely is something I've kind of always been interested in, in one way or another. It's it's funny. Um, we have one of our shows, um, social media shows network, and one of our shows, we have comedy shows, and we do all kind of crazy skits. I haven't been mm, involved skits. in a while, but yeah, I'm skits. a big fan of skits. <laughs> Those are fun. Um, I didn't think it happened, and they're rarely pre-rehearsed, so you don't really know what's going to happen until it does. Mm. Those are a lot of fun. Over at uh at podcast about list, we just completed a. Uh, a series of five week long series that we yeah. uh, called the the five weeks of planets, which was kind of a a I don't know if you're familiar with the so familiar with the planets of our solar system, but we did kind of comedic takes on each yeah. planet uh, with each yeah. episode. So it was five weeks, ten episodes because we do two episodes a week. So you know okay. we covered we covered Mars, Mercury, Venus, all the all the planets. We did kind of uh, fun songs, a few skits. Um, sure. sure poems reports you know the whole i don't know if you guys have ever or have any interest in kind of uh science at, in your comedy division but that that was big for us you know we had never considered doing anything like that before but then once we did it just really clicked it's always funny where we something we don't plan to do ends up being like the big hit exactly it was one of it was it, it was huge for us i mean it it it, yeah. it was I, the fans all adored it we loved doing it and I, it it was it was truly a blast i guess you could say it was out of this world it's out of this world out of this world i literally i, I live right outside of vandenberg space force base and i came here for space and missile training oh my goodness almost 20 years ago and studying space and orbital mechanics and and you have to make it fun. To me, it has to be math or science has to be fun so you can remember it. Mm, absolutely. That's uh, that's uh, incredible. I had no idea you were you were well versed in, in space and space force and missiles, no less. That sounds incredible. That sounds fascinating. It was. I I'm actually a licensed aircraft mechanic and uh, retired 21 years in the Air Force and just did a lot of different things. And before I retired, I was in the space and missile field. And my son's in the Air Force now, serving in Japan. So a very exciting career path. We all have to make our own path in this world. Mm. So how many people are on your on your comedy team or on your podcast or your, your business? So uh, I can list them off for you. It's for it's me, Cameron Fetter, okay. and then we have Patrick Doran, uh, my good friend. He's also a stand-up comedian as well as Caleb Pitts, another stand-up comedian. And then sure. our producer is named uh, Julio, and he is, he's, lives in Mexico, actually. So we're okay. a, a multinational kind of company. We're called Sullivan the Frog Enterprises, LLC. Uh, that's our company. And then we also, we from time to time, will do Dungeons & Dragons, you know, the game. Ooh. So we have another <laughs> member who, who that is his purview. His name is, we call him Patches, because his name is also Patrick. Um, it's kind of funny to have two Patrick's, you know, the zany things. Two Patrick's, of course. Yeah, not. yeah. Two Joes, I know. Um, and that's the core group. You know, we have we have plenty of other collaborators as well, but we find, you know, that small group really makes things kind of tick along well and uh, really keep... It's enough people to keep us with the fresh ideas all the time um, without getting too crazy. Yeah, you don't want one person come up with the ideas all the time. It gets kind of boring. <laughs> Right, right. It becomes stagnant. Have you guys ever felt stagnant? Like I don't know what we're gonna do this week. Oh, uh, we've definitely felt stagnant before. I mean, we've had we've we've had a situation before where we ended up actually using. Uh, I don't know. Are you familiar with uh, Mad Libs? The yes, um, I am. Yes, yes I am. yeah, yeah. And Dungeons and Dragons D and D. Mm, mm -hmm. uh, we ended up using Mad Libs as content for some of our episodes, and while some fans were liked those a lot of other fans thought that that was us becoming stagnant you know using these mad libs um but we really always try to keep it fresh you know we we kind of cover co cover a wide range of topics all the time that's that's our goal we we've talked about for example the anti claus who is the he's the antithesis of santa claus he's an evil santa claus and his aim is to take over and destroy christmas by any means necessary so we talk about you know stuff as crazy as that while also just sure. sometimes talking about finance and wealth and um 
how to accumulate and and you know gain wealth and hold on to it yeah. and especially in yeah. today's world how to save uh smart money strategies and things like that so you know it's not it's not always grinches and anti clauses sometimes we really do try to get serious <laughs> and come at things from uh, the side of science or yeah. you know finance or even sometimes faith even oh wow you touch a little bit of everything um Okay, that's very interesting. You, you mentioned the anti clause, and I was thinking Grinch. That was the first thing. So the anti clause is actually different from the Grinch. The Grinch, uh, uh, which yeah, we all know the Grinch. Yeah. He's green. The yeah. anti clause looks more like uh, Santa Claus, but with yellow eyes. Would be how I would oh. describe. So you, if you, the description I'm sure sounds the same, but when you see them side by side, you'd you'd probably be able to tell the difference a little better. Really, so. You you have um this animation or you have people in, in costume? How do you go about mm -hmm. doing these or portraying it? We kind of tell stories and we talk about it. It's uh there isn't much of a visual element. Sometimes you know, we'll look at pictures, we'll put pictures up on the screen. But okay. uh well we did actually we recently did a, a Thanksgiving play and we had uh we had one member of our team, you know, dressed as a turkey, one as a pilgrim, etc. But usually, you know, we 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 like to play around with the costumes and dressing people up as stuff um you know dressing as elves during christmas time dressing for the five weeks of planets we actually each dressed as the planet each week so for example you could you could wear a ring if you were dressing as saturn, saturn uh sure. you know dress all red to dress as mars so we we do actually Although nobody dressed as the the anti clause this year, we do actually have a pretty strong basis in costumes. I would say that's that's one of our our pieces, <laughs> our, our comedy bread and butter. For, for me, it's hats. I probably have about thirty different hats. It's kind of a, it's kind of my thing, and I have a few costumes where I'm oh wow out there presenting or of course got those are great hats. Oh, that cloth. one's perfect for the season. Exactly, and I'll be doing that later. And I've got top hats and gold hats and glow in the dark, and we all we all have to have our our thing, our our knit. Absolutely, something people remember us by. And so, what's your knits really? So I, I'll ask Cameron. I remember Cameron. Mm. What 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 makes you stand out, or what do you think makes you stand out? I would say that people in the comedy sphere typically admire me for my x factor uh which is mm. to define that i would say that sometimes my brain goes to a place that people wouldn't typically expect right um sure. i think that a lot of people can you know you can write a joke but for me uh i find that my skill is often to say something unexpected or or random or or, or find an angle to attack the joke from that a lot of people might not typically get for example we were doing uh on the show and uh a few few months ago we were singing a song about the grinch we were doing a comedy song about the grinch uh and first we were kind of just singing about the grinch and then i decided to add in the the detail of the grinch having a, a swimming pool and i feel like that and it, maybe it doesn't sound so funny just to say it you know, without the song, I don't remember how the song have went. To, have to be there. Have to be there. Had one of those had to be there moments, yeah. I guess. But you know, I, I mean, I would guess I would ask you: Would you typically imagine the Grinch having a swimming pool? Not typically, no. No. So that's I would say what I what I usually bring to the table. And you know, I also I also uh, write and and you know I I can do a bit of everything. So I'm kind of a jack of all trades in that comedy sense. But the X factor that's that's what I try factor. to bring to the table. No, I, I love it. And even though I do videos and blogging, I'm also a blogger. But it's it's been a while. And I used to love writing. It just come to me naturally. But I become stagnant. So I don't do it as often. How do you write screenplays? That's something I do not have a skill for. Well, it all starts from yeah. page one. I'll tell you <laughs> yeah. that much. Uh, it's typically for me coming up with a character, a funny character. So say a caveman. Um, or maybe a wizard, and then from there throwing them into a situation they wouldn't typically be in, like you know, well, for a uh, swimming pool, I guess would be a good one that I mentioned before. And then sure. from there, you know, that's your page one, line one. A caveman is with a wizard at a swimming pool, or something like that, right? And I mean, from there, that could be a solid fantasy movie. Well, probably couldn't be much else with a wizard, 
But I think the idea is to come up with a bold and daring premise, and then mm -hmm. people will want to read past page one because that's what they always say. The challenge is getting people to read past page one. I would say. I can agree um, and then that. from there, it's just stick to itiveness, I guess. You know, hitting the coffee <laughs> shop with the laptop and just getting it all written out. And that's like, well, I remember those days. I used to be in the coffee shop for hours with my laptop. I now I do it from home mostly, but I remember those days mm. back, back when I was up and coming, trying some different things. I, I also mentioned that you you've done some acting, theater, or what have you done exactly? Um, well, I've, I've done I've 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 done some theater in mm -hmm. in high school, uh, sure. I, and uh, I've actually played um, McMurphy in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, the role that uh, that Jack Nicholson plays in the movie. Um, and I haven't I haven't touched the theater since then, but I, I typically yeah. will act in um, you know sketches, comedy skits, and sketches. Mm -hmm. Is uh, I recently. This will be uh, coming out soon, so this is, I guess, a bit of a a bit of a spoiler. Maybe this hasn't come out yet, but no, I no, recently played. No. So yeah, nobody spread this, please. Um, I recently played. Do you know? Have you ever? Do you know the drink Hawaiian Punch? Yeah, I played the the mascot for Hawaiian Punch in a comedy is that, skit. Is that right? The, yeah, the red hat and the, the little the, Hawaiian the shirt. Blue and white stripe. Yeah, oh. I was doing. I was doing the the hula dance. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, that one was very fun. Uh, I played a goth, yeah, recently as well on a comedy skit with uh, you know, I had to put on the eyeliner, <laughs> wear the black clothing, you yeah, know. So sure. it's all it's all over the place for me, but it's mostly com it's mostly comedy, for sure. I it was eight eight years ago. I played a, a priest in this movie and played a priest, and there was probably it's like a monastery. I think it was like. Four of us real priests, and one one youngster didn't know which way to go because he kind of fell for this girl. It was a lot of fun. It turned out to be a comedy. In regards to what I attempt to do, it turns out to be a comedy. So sometimes mm. they don't go with it very well. I do. Lo I love. Uh, I love monast things set in monasteries. I think that's such a beautiful setting for. Uh, I don't know if you ever seen the movie uh, Black Narcissus. Have you ever heard of this this movie? I have, but I don't think I've seen it. Uh, it's yeah, it's an older movie yeah. from I think I believe the '40s, and it's about a group of nuns who who colonize a, a Tibetan monastery. It's it's really fascinating, really beautiful. I really highly recommend it. It's not a what, not what, so much a comedy, but what what's it called? Black Black Narcissus. I'm gonna look that up. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> what, what better Christmas movie can you watch than that during the holidays, right? Hmm. Outside the other fun stuff, so. Where are you where are you going? To? And and I appreciate theater. I thought theater the first time I got um, tricked into playing a part it turned <laughs> out to be one of the best experiences of my life. And it was a little frightening and scary, but so much fun. But well, where do you see you you go in the future? Um, you keep the screenplay or or specific focus, or you want to try something totally different? Well, in the future, I definitely would love to see. Uh podcast about list my podcast i mean i'd love to see it skyrocket of course um of course of course yeah i would love to be you know up in the top 10 charts i think that uh you know we're semi-popular at the moment i think that we could really we could really strike it big if we got the right uh press or you know had the right um endorsement from the right person i, I really do feel that so i'd love to be able to do you know great big stuff with that i mean um especially having just gotten off the doing the five weeks of planets uh yeah. i think it would be incredible to be you know making enough money to be to be have enough tough free time to be able to really take the science content to the next level and you know do things like maybe even visit uh switzerland and try and and visit the the particle accelerator the the collider they have there i mean that would be incredible you know uh just museum trips as well i mean we're really looking to expand further into the science sphere i think and and for the podcast that would be definitely where i see it going in the future uh, but for myself yeah. i definitely would try to pursue acting more um sure. i would love to have a role in a large franchise you know i think i could really bring something special to the table you know one of these newer movies like dune or like say even another west side story movie i think anything along the spectrum of you know science fiction to 
a theater type movie, I think I could really excel in. And I think that might be in my future as well. Great. Do you um, also sing and dance? Those are always challenges. Uh, yeah. Dance. Well, I do. I do. A, I do a little. Uh, yeah. I do. I do sing some. Uh, I, I definitely not my my strong suit, but I think you could. I think you could technically consider me a triple threat. I guess in that regard, the singing, dancing, <laughs> and acting. That um, that's... Well, have you ever had any um, parents or family members like, "What are you doing that for? Go go do go do something else." Any anyone ever try to steer you in a different direction? Mm. Yes, uh, my parents yeah. both wanted me to be a teacher. Um because my parents are both teachers and they said that uh just i mean i did some volunteer teaching work before in my past i was really i mean quite good at it and so it was kind of difficult for me to break away from that and i think my parents definitely still harbor some resentment i think there's probably uh less communication between us than there could be at the moment as probably as a result of that i mean sure. Honestly, for me, I think that the planets stuff really is maybe a way to try and bring some of that back and, you know, appease my family a little bit, bring some of the science, the educational content, because I do think that there is a, a rift there that maybe I caused that I, I don't feel so good about. But, yeah. um, you know, we follow our hearts. I know, I know. A, a lot of artists do fall into that. Um because it's hard to be successful, even though we're very creative. We're all born, we're all born creative, but very few of us. Mm. Uh, well, luckily, I am. I am yeah. pretty. I, I did end up being pretty successful, so I at least don't have that that burden on my shoulders. <laughs> that's that's a relief. That's a relief. Most people never make it; they give up too quick. Mm. Uh, anyone, an entrepreneur, regardless of what our passion is, that. Uh, we want to make the money quick, and very few of us do. And then we just we, we lose interest, and we want to do something we don't like to do. But it seems like you're still doing what you enjoy doing. It's kind of a big deal. That's a really absolutely. Big deal. So how do how do people find? So Cameron, this sounds pretty interesting. I want to learn a little, little bit more about these lists and these planets, and I want to hear right. some well, of your comedy. How do they find? Uh, I mean, the best place to go is on YouTube podcast about list. We, we post most, all of our regular episodes on there. We have premium episodes on Patreon as well. I mean, we're also you can also find us on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, on, you know, pretty much wherever you you find podcasts. Uh, you can reach us by email as well, podcastaboutlist at gmail.com. Um, for me, I mean, I guess you can always follow my Instagram. I don't know why you would, but you can. But it's mostly, yeah, you know, YouTube, Spotify, etc. That's the best. That's the best spot. Well, that's great. I, I have an Instagram account also. I haven't looked at it in months. I don't know what it <laughs> just, just don't keep up with those things. As, yeah, as it'll as, be the death of us. For sure. It'll be the death of us. I, it took me several years to understand Facebook, and I'm good. I'm good. And use it very effectively with the things I'm trying to do. So that's very interesting. Well, any last words of encouragement for someone who wants to follow their passion, try something new, get out of their funk? Yeah. Um, I guess I would say, you know, if you're having trouble, if you're feeling stagnant in what you're doing, if it's a creative pursuit, um, you know, consider incorporating science. Uh, that was a huge boon for me and for my colleagues. Um, and I think just showing some interest in the planets of our solar system and, you know, there's literally seven or eight, depending on who you ask, worlds outside of the world that we live on that are in our solar system. You don't need to limit yourself to Earth. You know, let your creativity spread out through, I mean, I guess the entire galaxy if you want to. But yeah, I think science is 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 it. Hey, if Captain Kirk can take the whole galaxy on, we can also <laughs> learn from him. Absolutely. All right. Well, th this has been fun, Cameron. And we definitely wish you the best in what you're doing. We're going to follow you. I'm going to follow you. It's pretty exciting. Uh, to hear about different things, I'm really gonna be looking at the list of pod podcasts, the list, and and I'd like to hear more about those planets. <laughs> Definitely, see how I can incorporate <laughs> that, or at least have fun with it. I've got grandchildren; yeah. they would 
love anything different anyway. So that'd be a yeah, it'll be great for grandchildren. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, we salute you. We wish you the uh, happy holidays, happy new year, Merry Christmas, yeah, happy holidays happy to Valentine's you as well. Valentine's Day, some more, all those things coming up. So appreciate it. And uh, this has been In the Office with Joseph Scogin and Podcast the List with Cameron Fetter. All Thank right, you so everyone. much for having me. Make sure you subscribe to both of our channels and whatever it is, find your own creative mind and go with it. There are people that want to hear your story. There are people that want to see you succeed. There are people who want to grow side by side with you. If nothing else, do it for you to make sure you're setting a good example. With that being said, you're in the office once again with Joseph Scott. Have a great day, everyone. If you liked our show, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or find us on any social media platform, Instagram, of course, Facebook. Like, subscribe, share. We appreciate it. Let us know your thoughts and join our team. Anyways, we appreciate you staying tuned week after week, day after day, because we continuously build up our network to bring to you what you're asking for. Have a great day.